When you ask someone to name a famous German person, they'll probably say, I bet Einstein or Friedrich Schiller or some other men. But when you specifically ask them for a famous German woman, what will they say? Yeah, probably Heidi Klum. But there is another very famous German woman that you all know, Marlene Dietrich. Yes, yes. Marlene, ich bin von Kopf bis Fuß auf Liebe eingestellt. She was an actress and a singer, you know, one of those female tenors with really erotic and smoky voices, and a fashion icon. There's this type of pants with really, really white legs. In German, we call them Marlene Hose because she wore them so often. Now, Marlene is a real Berlin girl. Nächste Berlinerin, wa? And she was born in 1901 in the district of Schöneberg. After her dream of becoming a violinist was over due to an injury, she turned to acting instead and quickly acted in lots of films in the 1920s here in Berlin. After her big breakthrough as Lola in Der Blaue Engel, Hollywood came knocking and she decided to move to the US. Her first US film already led to a huge scandal because she performed in man's clothing. Imagine a woman in a tux and a top hat kissing another woman on screen in the 1930s. You can imagine the headlines. She is actually known for rocking man's suits a lot and stands for women taking over masculine styles. While the Nazis were in power in Germany, Josef Goebbels offered her lots and lots of money to come back to Germany and make films here for the Nazis. But she rejected every single offer. Instead, she decided to become an American citizen in 1939, saying that Germany was no longer the country she once knew. She was so invested in doing her part to fight the Nazis that she even said she is sad that women can't be soldiers. But still, she interrupted her acting career to accompany the American troops through Europe and perform for them. In the next two decades, she rose to massive fame and eventually a world tour led her back to Germany. The German people were quite torn. You know, they admired her because she was now an international film star, but they also saw her as a traitor because she left Germany right before the Nazis got to power and even gave up her German citizenship. Eventually, she made her last film in 1978 and moved to Paris, where she lived a rather quiet life until her death in 1992. While she seemed to have left Berlin behind entirely, she still decided to sing the song Ich hab noch einen Koffer in Berlin in 1960. Although not specifically written for her, her version is definitely the most iconic and definitely the most meaningful one. The song talks about the beautiful sights of Berlin and a suitcase with her most treasured memories from her time there, which she will one day return to pick up.